The federal government has announced plans to release some prison inmates within the correctional facilities to aid its fight against the coronavirus. And as Abia State begins the lockdown, the state provides palliatives for its citizens. But will it reach those who really need it? This is PLOS Politics and I am Felicity Ezeweke. You're welcome to the program. In a bid to prevent the further spread of the coronavirus pandemic in Nigeria, the federal government announced plans to release some prison inmates within the correctional facilities. This is just as the four inmates who sustained injuries during an attempted jailbreak of a fears of coronavirus outbreak at the Kaduna State's Maximum Custodian Center on Tuesday are pronounced dead. Since leadership is at the crux of managing this crisis, we'll also discuss Nobel laureate Walesho Inka's position that President Muhammad Buhari was slow to respond to the crisis and that he would rather take directives from a state governor. But first, let's introduce our guests. In the studio is legal practitioner Dele Farotimi. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. And we will be joined uh, by a telephone by the PRO of the Nigerian Correctional Service, Lagos, that's uh, Rotimi Oladokun. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Rotimi, can you hear me? Okay, we'll try and establish contact with him and uh, get uh, to it. But let me start this way. How impressed are you by the comments about how our prison services will be, correctional services rather, uh, will be uh, managed during this crisis and the actuality of actions being taken? You know, it is almost impossible to deal with subjects in Nigeria as if they be isolated from the overall malaise that has overtaken our country. Now, to use the word impressed in relation to anything that has been done by any government, save perhaps for Jideson Olu's government in Lagos State, would be criminal in the extreme because there is nothing that has been done that suggests that there was any effort thought that somebody sat down somewhere to consciously plan the response to this pandemic. Okay, you know what? Let's let's take a, let's yeah. talk to the PRO to hear what Please. is being done. Then we can have the conversation. That was the original plan. Thank so um, I understand we have uh, Rotimi Oladoku on the phone. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, hello, good day. A pleasure to have you. All right, uh, please bring us up to speed as to what is being done um, in your area of operation to contain and protect citizens um, in the prisons. Uh, hello, good, good day. Can you yeah, hear me? Yeah, the image population of the Nigerian Correctional Service is just a command. The command has initiated a sensitization and advocacy program for the officers, men, and inmates throughout the command on the coronavirus and the health implication. Further to that, we've deployed uh, personal protective equipment like hand gloves, face masks, sanitizers, and also um, fumigated the general custodial centers in the command. And further to that, we've been interacting with the Lagos State Ministry of Justice and the NCDC regarding um, collaboration to prevent the outbreak of the COVID-19 in the prison population. Further to that also, the Lagos State Judiciary has suspended the court process presently. So we have really influx or no influx of new inmates coming to the general inmate population as it is now. 
So we have those that have been inside our consumer center before the outbreak of the COVID virus in the general state of All right. population. So that's that. And we've restricted visits to inmates in custody. So we deployed these uh, preventive fraud line measures against any possible infection or contagion from outside to the general prison. Okay, I, I want to ask you, um, talk us through how you are managing to implement the social distancing and basic hygiene, which is washing your hands regularly, uh, aside all the other preventive measures you've taken. Yes, we have washing points with um, liquid soap, um, anti-entitled, atrocity, peace, in the custodial center. So coming into the custodial center, your, your temperature is taken, you wash hands, you sterilize, you move in. So and each spark cell has those wash, uh, wash hand points. Okay. Hello, uh, can you hear yes, me? Yes, yes. We're still with you. Yes. So we deploy this at all the cell points, advantage points within the general custodial centers. And there's always further advocacy with the public health department unit on inmates and officers and men about the danger. So and all, obviously the visit has been suspended and all activities that require glad gathering of inmates and equality things. Thank you. All right, let, let me ask you this question quickly. At the federal level, we understand the, the minister uh, of Interior, Raoul Arigbeshola, talked about, you know, decongesting the prison uh, uh, via releasing inmates who are detained for minor offenses. This is going to be across uh, the correctional facilities in the country. How is that playing out in Lagos? Well, in Lagos, we received directive from the National Aid Court regarding the presidential amnesty and the congestion program. So the criteria we were given, we forwarded the list to the National Aid Court for further processing. Has anyone been released? Presently, no. We are still waiting for that direction from the National Aid Court Okay. What, so what more can you tell us about uh, the preparations as to... We, we heard um, in Kaduna State there was a riot and four inmates died uh, from injuries sustained. What are you doing to truly sensitize the inmates in your area of um, uh, engagement to avoid a repeat of such a scenario over fears that there might be an outbreak? Well, in Lagos State Command of the Nigerian Correctional Service, the controller of the command has been up and joining. He conducts regular supervision and inspection of all the custodial centers. He engages with the officers in charge, the men and the inmates particularly, and sensitizes them about the current danger about the COVID virus pandemic. Further to that, they are ration, they are feeding are well provided and well taken, taken care of. So there's no fear of any unrest in Lagos State Command. Everything is working perfectly and the inmates are always brief. All right, thank you very much, uh, Rotimi, for uh, sharing your time with us at this time. Please stay safe. Thank you very much. All right, Dilly. Over to you. Let, let's, let, let me take your reaction. You were saying there was no um, update on what is being done. We've heard from someone who should know what's happening, at least in Lagos State. I'm trying my best to keep a straight face. But I think um, first and first, we should thank Mr. Arotimi for at least he's come out. And he's done it. He's made the best of a bad job, trying his best to sell a position that obviously isn't going to sell to anyone who knows anything about the workings of the Nigerian prison services. They might call it correction or remand or whatever name they might care to call it. At the end of the day, what it is, is a place where society has gone to keep people whom it has find reason to conclude are useless. Even those who are on the streets are already considered expendable. How much more those who have been locked away 
who oh. nobody really watches over. Now, in a fit of um, conscience, years back, I joined my church's prison visitation department. I'd been a lawyer for some years. I'd done some criminal defense work. I'd run away from it because I saw how dirty and non-correctional our justice system and the prison system itself actually is. So I walked away from it. But after a while, I started having pangs of conscience about all the people who might have benefited from my expertise. So I started volunteering. And I went back a couple of times. And I saw enough to make me know that I really do not need to live with the trauma of seeing what we do to people we call prisoners. Okay, let, let's, let's uh, d d at this time, what mm. we're looking at, we have a, a plethora of I am problems, telling you, right? But for now, we yeah. have a crisis. Yes. And we need to find a way. They are human beings, they are citizens, irrespective of um, whatever any person thinks, and they need to be protected. It's part of federal government responsibility. <laughs> so what I'm going to ask you, yes. I know you have a lot of no, concerns, no, go. right? What I'm going to ask you yes. is how in your opinion at this time this yeah. very crucial time yes. aside the measures that has been highlighted yes. by the pro yes. um, um can they take to ensure that these people for now don't get further problems Look, there, there is a problem i always have when we discuss nigeria and it is that you always think that you can deal with any issue in isolation from the madness that is already there. I would ex I'll try my best to just be concise and deal okay, with it. Because we still need to asked. move on to another yeah, issue. No problem. Yeah. Here is the thing. If you're truly interested in the interest of the people who are locked away in our prisons, every person who is in prison for a non-violent crime that is not rape, or robbery, or robbery, that is a non-violent crime, something for which a fine might have been paid, they should be released forthwith. The fact of the matter is that those who are actually out on the street, who are out and supposedly free, are not any better protected than those who are in there, but their own situation is worsened by the fact that they are forgotten. He's talking about how they've blocked their way visitors from the prison. What he's saying, in effect, is that some people are going to starve to death in that prison. He, he talked about because food, no, that they what food, food they are who, are they, who are they lying to? Who are they lying to? Anybody who knows anything about our prison system knows that some people are feeding fat on monies that are budgeted for prisoners to be fed and clothed and whatever with. Some people make their money from that. That is what they consider their bad right, is their money. That's their deal. The jeep they ride, the jeeps they ride comes from the so money meant for you, that. Do you fear that even now that there might be a repeat of the scenario in Kaduna State, even in the midst of this crisis? Put it this way. We've sown a lot of lies for years. We're going to start reaping them pretty soon. Kaduna is just the tip of the iceberg. Maybe you're still talking about prisoners. It starts when people lose hope. How can we give them a little bit of that at this time? Let's even try to remember they exist. The first That's thing why we're having this conversation, really. We are talking. Somebody the people is who watching. should be doing, we, we, they, they will watch. But there is a whole world of difference between reactions and responses. We knew we had the COVID outbreak upon us. We were aware that there were community-based infections more than two weeks ago. We knew that the prison population would be vulnerable. Somebody is the Minister for Interior. Some persons are responsible for managing the prisons. Ordinary missile outbreak, any form of epidemic in Nigeria, it always begins in those prisons because they are like ovals. Spaces that were intended for as little as four people is housing as many as 20, 30 in some cases. He's talking about segregation. How do you segregate people in overpopulated prisons? How? All right. Leadership is part of the. Of there is problem. no leadership. Don't let's fool ourselves. Okay. Look. Let's 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 let's. <laughs> daily. Okay. Um. Let's start by taking a look 
at a reaction uh, by um, Nobel Laureate Wale Shoinka. He was, um, he joined us for a chat in the news um, uh, to express his thoughts. He reiterated his position um, on the matter of leadership, the lockdown, and, you know, basically everything on how this crisis is being managed. We'll take a look at that clip and then we'll come back and continue the conversation here. Yes, yes, the president himself has been very slow. And again, uh, he bears the, you know, the buck stops there. But again, this has to do with the advisors. The same thing during the crisis of the herdsmen. Just see how long it took the president to visit a scene you know, of massacre. There's the people around him always. And exactly the same thing was slow to react as a leader. I watched uh, just yesterday a uh, uh, broadcast on uh, TV from uh, on Sky News, I think. There was a queen who's been brought out, if you like, from mothballs to add her voice to the kind of leadership, kind of leadership uh, speech, attachment, identification, which had already been said by the prime minister of that nation. So even this felt that was not enough. And of course, they acted very, very early. Our president sat there, and then finally, that's why I call him Brib Van Winkle, uh, that he woke up after a long sleep, and then started issuing orders. So what goes on there? This crisis goes back several months. The presidential task force was set up sometime in the middle of last month. Now that's not the tempo to take for an epidemic, a pandemic of this nature. And then we get these illiterate, you know, mouthing, shooting their mouths out, talking about, about irrelevances and Nollywood and the performances and so on. So how do we read the president in circumstances like that? That's why I will take orders very happily from the governor at any time, of course, examining it critically. But I know I can pick up my phone or send him a text and say, listen, eh, you're making a mistake here because this is not what we observe. All right. And there are many models to follow. Look at Sweden, for instance. Sweden is not, I'm not saying, again, let me backtrack. I'm not saying lockdown is wrong. I've locked myself here voluntarily. Now it's about three weeks. I'm not complaining. I'm not saying it's not good for the country. But I'm saying that those who can actually choose models are those who are right on the scene, like the governor, the chairman of local councils, etc. So I was going to refer to the model of Sweden, okay. where, for instance, they haven't closed down schools, they have lots of public services running. It's an experiment, it's a gamble. One doesn't say that is perfect, but one is saying that let us always give ourselves options. And those who can decide on those options are those who are closest to the center, and right. those especially who've been active since the epidemic began. Oh, the Professor. collaboration between Ogun State and Lagos, for instance, it's something to praise, something to be proud of. You know, it's a model for everybody. Else. It's a model for them. A lot of talking point there, but the, the one that just stood out for me was the issue of um, him choosing to listen to state governors at this time, um, from what I understand, because they are in the middle. They know what is going on. But then again. I have sat um, here with lawyers who say that it is the president that can order a lockdown the way that this has been done. Could you shed more light on this? First off, your reaction to him saying he would rather listen to a state governor than the president and the controversy over who should be ordering a lockdown at this time. Frankly speaking, given a choice between <laughs> listening to Professor Shoyinka issue me a directive or one issuing forth from the ventriloquists in Asu Rock, I would rather listen to Professor Shoyinka. Let's be clear about that. Now, to now deal with the legality of what he has said, if we are indeed in a federal system, which we aren't, even though our constitution lies to itself and claims to be federal, it is very clear that the president can speak when it comes to issues that crosses state boundaries, but when it relates to matters within the state, ordinarily that should belong to the state government. But because we run a constitution that is functionally unitary in nature, 
You can then have situations where Big Brother will sit down in Abuja and issue directives as if it was still Major General Muhammad Dubuari that is ruling over a military junta and dealing with the subjects, as it were. But because in reality, we have a system of government that is top heavy. You have a situation where when Obasanjo was there and he was that big egomaniacal man with all his ideas, brilliant some of them were, even though they were badly executed, by sheer force of his character, he could continue to carry on as if it were a military regime and a lot of people by sheer force of his charisma will follow. But in a situation where there is a failure of leadership from the top, it becomes prudent to begin to listen to the men who are at the local level, who are closer to the people, and by far more responsive than the federal government has been in this crisis. Well, but there seemed to be that the argument from the presidency that this cannot be um, a, a decision that's made in isolation. We have, for instance, the Nigeria Governors Forum. We have we, we saw pictures of the Lagos State Governor going to give an update to Buhari. Whatever the argument is about that is irrelevant at this moment. But we know that there is some sort of communication and that this decision was not just taken um, in isolation. So when we say, yes, there are lots of problems, but that kind of leadership, this lockdown, hasn't it done us some good? Let me, I, you see, I will come back to what you've said, but there is something that keeps popping to mind every time we try to discuss Nigeria, and it's the Yoruba proverb of the lying farmer, the one who plants a hundred mound of yam, and he proclaims to the entire world that he's planted 500. When he's done eating the hundred that is real, he would have to eat the, five, the 400 that are imaginary. When there is a leadership gap, people necessarily find ways to fill those gaps. There is a gap. Power abhor vacuum. If the president is not up and doing, even you in asking your question, you spoke about the presidency. You didn't talk about the president. You didn't talk about a person. Leadership ennials in persons who works within systems. We lack leadership in Nigeria. So if governors are stepping up to the plate, Sanwolu has done, Sanwolu would have but done a we, better we, job. Even, on, okay, uh, let me also flip that conversation yes, a bit please. and talk about the fact that nobody is, uh, operates in a vacuum. Yes. He has advisors. Wale Shoinka says that it seems these advisors are not doing what they are supposed to do. Um, from your comments so far, you might share that kind of objective, but that kind of um, mindset, uh, I just assume, am I correct? I don't. That the advisors are not doing enough? I don't, actually. Oh, please go ahead. I am of the firm opinion that Prof was being too kind to the president. A president is only as good as the advisors he surrounds himself with. That's exactly and my question. And the quality like... of the advisors are reflective of the leader. And when you see what they, what they hold primary in their duties to the president, you have a clearer picture of what the president's priorities are. When they, went, when they followed him to Dapchi in the immediate aftermath of the kidnap, they made sure to carry the red carpet because they knew the president was interested in having the pump of his office in place. It wasn't about the condolence to the families or any commiseration. It was about functioning in his office as the president of Nigeria. They remembered the red carpet. Dele, so if they are we not are remembering so, now, I mean, it's been yeah, said every one. time that, that we are as good as the people that we put in power. I don't know if I'm para, 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 paraphrasing. Did you put but we there? have we have a situation. There was an election. If yeah. we allowed it to be rigged, we also have a part. Allowed. To, a, a, part, a part to play. I don't so, argue with the man carrying a gun. <laughs> Dele, this is a reality right now. We have a crisis and we need leadership. What is the way forward for us? Good. First thing first, understand that the least of our problem is the pandemic itself. Nigeria has bigger problems than the pandemic. All this shut down. We're just lying to ourselves. Take a drive around Lagos or walk around Lagos if you are able to in the dead of night. Around nine, you will see how crowded the streets are in some parts of this town. Look, 
the key thing we need to be telling ourselves goes beyond the headless reaction and panic. It's about looking at the situation we are in in a clear-headed manner. First thing first, we don't have leadership. Let's be clear about that. Whether we can remedy that in the coming years, that's another ball game entirely. So how do we get out of this without leadership? Frankly speaking, nature abhors vacuums. And as Walisho Inka had pointed out, Abiodun stepped up in Ogun State. So he's able to follow Abiodun's lead. I am proud to say that for the first time in Lagos, somebody rose to the occasion. I didn't say so. Watch my word and listen to it carefully. He rose to the occasion. For all it is what? Even if it's only for the audiovisual benefit of the leadership provided, Jide Swawolu is doing something. For all is what? What is President Buhari doing? I'm afraid we don't. I wish we could continue, but we have to move on now. Thank you very much for You're your thoughts welcome. so far. I'll be back with you in a bit. But let's take a quick break. When we return, how prepared is Abia State for the fight against COVID-19? That's our conversation. Stay with us.